How you doing, YouTube? Matt Massa Beer Reviews, back with new brewery time yet again. Well, technically not new brewery time. I've had one beer from these guys, but they all come from the same place. Klein Dumfe. And they all come from the same person. That'd be my boy, This. He's from Netherlands. He sent off a bunch of their beers. This is a bourbonized Russian Imperial Stout. We're going to drink the fuck out of this beer. Yes, I said F. Gotta stop cursing, man. I got a kid and stuff. Anyway. Okay. Man, I'm throwing this aggressive. Enjoy the head on this one. Um, yeah, I never had anything from these guys before. I've drank one, one drinking. I drank one beer, and uh, it was a IPL spoiler. Probably go up the same time as this. I really enjoyed it. Uh, bourbonized Russian Imperial Stout. That head is not going to stick around. I can tell. Um, it looks like this was bottled in March of 2021. It's a Dutch craft beer. Um, ingredients in the sucker are water, pilsner malt, uh, taro malt, carrot 120, special B, amber malt, roasted malt, challenger hop, and gist. I don't know what gist is. Clyde Dunphy means little thumb. I actually, when I was doing the other one at the end of it, I actually dawned on me because I remember hearing that before. I don't know how. Uh, I was like, ah, little thumb. Um, lock code 16065. Yeah, label is alright. All the labels are essentially the same. Um, they just have a little bit of variance to them. And as far as the beer goes, it looks the part of a Russian Imperial Stout. I mean, it's quite a bit lighter than what I expect. It's not not dark, obviously. You can see that on camera. But I can glean some color from it. It's a, like almost like Imperial Brown Ale as far as uh, darkness goes as opposed to what I usually expect from a Russian Imperial Stout. EBV on this. 12%. And I'm assuming, because if you look at the label, that they have a Jim Beam and a Jack Daniels barrel. I assume this is barreled in Beam and, and Daniels barrels. I'm assuming. They might say that over here, but I just can't read what the hell is written there. So, uh, yeah. Let's get a nose on this sucker. I'm not getting any spirit whatsoever. Yeah, maltiness, uh, a, a little semi-sweet baker's chocolate, a little bit of spiciness, like blackstrap and less, less spiciness. Might be a barrel char that's bringing that. That's pretty much it. Really not much spirit at all in the nose. It's a little bit of kind of oaky, tanny, charry thing in there. There's definitely like a roasted malt characteristic, but there's not a big hop um, punch in here. And there's not like a booziness or hotness, and there's no spirit in here. So on the nose, it really does come off as like... A base Imperial Stout. Not much to be had there. A nutty characteristic, too. There's definitely like a hazel nutty kind of thing going on here. Nutella-like vibes. Let's dive in. Cheers. Yeah. It's a little too thin and a little bit too disjointed. I get a bigger bittering on the taste and I thought I was going to get based off of what I got on the nose. I think it's a combination of both hops and a little bit of roasted malts and a little bit of barrel char, mostly hops doing, actually it might be a carbonic acid in combination with hops thing because it has a seltzer vibe to it. Okay. I gotta talk about something too when this is over or get close to the end. Um, it's definitely got a bearing component. Definitely has a spiciness to it. I believe it's a combination of hops. I believe there is a big carbonic thing. I believe a little bit from barrel charge. There's almost no spirit to the beer whatsoever. I'm 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 not saying it wasn't barrel aged, but if it was barrel aged, it was barrel aged in super dry barrels for a very minimal time. There's like a tannic tea-like hop to it, almost like a very fuggly. I know they said they called out with a cascade on this, I believe it was, right? Challenger. And guess? Um, yeah. This is not a stout. This is not a Russian Imperial stout. And it's very little barrel and spirit involved in here. Is it a negative beer? Uh, you know, I'm not saying it's not offensive. There's really not much to it. Um, it's got this over-aggressive spiciness, bittering thing that I think is actually just a, a heaping dose of carbonic acid. I know I talk about the carbonic thing quite a bit when it comes to hazy IPAs. It's much more harder or much more less showy in darker beers, but I think this one's kind of a little bit too big. Hmm. 
not a not a not a negative beer. Not a good beer though. Yeah. Kinda of bummed. I was in a mood for a nice kind of barrel aged beer, and this is not what I'm getting here, you know? Uh, I believe if I drank this blind, I don't even know what I'd say about it. I might hem and haw about it having something going on because I couldn't put my finger on it. Um, but it really does lack the barrel and the spirit that it really be called a barrel-aged beer. And as far as a Russian Imperial Stout goes, it's almost like a spice stout, you know, more than anything else. So, yeah. We're going to do this in two sections because i got something to talk about. I'm going to talk about Mount Rushmore status, and I'm going to talk about something that I think is a little bit poopy. And you guys can... Take it for what it's worth. Is this one of the better rush, barrel aged beers I've had as late? No. Is it one of the better Russian Imperial Stouts I've had as late? No. Is it one of the better bourbon barrel aged Russian Imperial Stouts? No. Across the board. Um, just not a fan of the beer. Okay. Here's the thing that I really want to talk about. So I do two to three beer reviews, sometimes four, sometimes one. More often than not, two to three beer reviews when I do a beer review uh, session. Um, do it a couple days a week, two to four days a week. I did two to four beers per session. Tonight I'm doing two. And I did this, and I actually did another beer from these people. When you open up the video, I said, oh, I've had one beer from these guys before. So, uh, spoiler alert, that was about 20 minutes ago. And that was this beer. Here. This is their Sterk Blonde. It was a dry hopped lager. I actually liked this beer quite a bit. I thought it was tasty. That was fun. I actually said reminded me of a Jack's Abbey IPL, which I think is very high praise. You'll see the you'll see this video when the other one comes up. Why are these why is this bottle dyed? Why is that bottle darker? I mean it's I, hopefully that shows on camera, but like this bottle here is way darker than that bottle over there. Could just be the bottle supplier. I don't think that's the case. They almost they look identical as far as shape, as far as markings. I'll tell you right now, they come from the same exact company. And I'm not saying this is the case. They have the same. Oh no, this is a different bottle. This is a parting line on it. This one doesn't. So regardless, it could just be random chance that they happen to put this beer in a very, very, very dark bottle. Very dark bottle. But it almost like, I'm not saying they did it on purpose, but it's almost like, okay, this beer didn't come out as rich and dark as we wanted to. Let's put it in a darker bottle so it looks that way. Again, total assumption on my part. But, get, but to get two distinctly different bottle colors from our brewery, Is weird to me. I mean, if they're uh, like a specialty bottle, a wax bottle, a, you know, 500 milliliter, like, you know, that kind of stuff. But when it's both 12 ounce bottles, something about one being epically darker when it needs to be a darker beer. I don't know. That's just me. Me hemming and hawing about weird shit. Anyway, um, let's see. Uh, where did I leave off? Um, uh, Faggot availability? Is that where I was? At? I have no idea. Deutschland. Let me know it's what Deutschland. Deutschland. Netherlands? That's Deutschland. Um, and, um, yeah, I'm all over the place now. I went on a tangent. Uh, if you like what we like this, if you like the so lightly barreled spirited beers, you might like this. If you like trying beer, you like this. It, it, it's good to get baselines both on a good and bad level. I don't think this is a really great beer. It's not an offensive beer. It's not a negative beer. It's just not a good beer. I think you need to have those in your life. If we're going to make like a silver lining to this, I think you need to have that experience on both ends of the spectrum. I think you should covet the great beers you've had in life, but I also think you should appreciate the really just not good ones you've had. And I'm not saying this is turned or negative. It's not that kind of bad. It's just for me, for what it wants to be a barrel aged Russian Imperial Stout, that this beer is neither of those things. So. You need markers um, to, you know, if every beer you have is amazing, you don't drink amazing beer. You drink beer, you know, if all the beer you drink is shit, you don't drink shit beer. You drink beer. There's no different. There is no difference. Literally no difference except for the amount of money people spend than the person only drinking super whales than the average bud drinker. Uh, that's that's it. There's no there's no good or bad. You know what I mean? It's it's just you want the best of the best, or you just want beer. It's all the same. But when you live 
in you don't live in that vacuum and you live in a world where you drink this side you drink that side and you can appreciate everything in between that's where these beers kind of hold um knowledge there you go that's all i'm gonna say hopefully you guys enjoyed our review let me know if you've had this i'm curious to see what you guys say down there if you want to talk about it massive beers if you want to check me out in the social media stuff beer massif want to check me out doing the podcasting thing hopefully you guys enjoyed our review hopefully you're enjoying a little bit of beer right now We'll see you next time. Cheers.